So then I have the small 100 millimeter six jaw chuck with extended jaws. These are usually very odd looking, <laughs> just as this one. By the way, this is from Sun Sun U or Sun Q. Not really sure. Far East import, of course. But it's it's decently made. The, the jaws are a nice tight fit in the body. That's all that counts. The rest is will have to need work anyway. You can get these chucks for a very high price tag from other manufacturers too. But I decided to spend my Sunday that I'm not working on customer stuff to spend that Sunday in the shop and play on this chuck here and learn a bit, little bit about rebuilding chucks and do a video on it. So I hope you enjoy this too. These extended jaw chucks are usually used or in a lot of cases used for tool grinding, especially drill bits. Let's clamp a drill in here. And when you clamp a drill in a normal three jaw chuck, it holds very, very bad when you clamp on the, on the flutes because the jaws are relatively short in height and usually the jaws will, will clamp in, in open air. That's not good. Six jaw is better because it has more points of contact around the circumference, about twice as much, but still very short jaws that cannot support the drill properly. With the extended height jaws, you can hit the drill at least in one point on each jaw all the way around. Not all on the same height, of course, because the twist drill has a, a twist to it, hence the name. But it's way better than that. And the extended jaws have another advantage. Let's say you're on a, on a plum cutter grinder, you have this at your, at your angle that you want to your grind your, your tip. You come in with your grinding wheel, you can go nice across the tip and grind your primary and secondary release if you do a four facet grind. This gives you a lot of clearance all the way around. And I do not only want to use this on the tool and color grinder, I also want to put this on my new Walter dividing head. Because when you use this in a horizontal position and you have, let's say you have a part in here, like this, it's clamped and you drop down with an end mill and I, and I call it chuck, you can get all the way up to the, to the face of the jaws, not a problem. With a normal chuck or with a collar chuck like this holding apart, you always have this massive flat. Uh, there is a lot of things that get in the way. <laughs> but with these large bevels on the jaws, that's not the case. The drawback, of course, is that you do not have, you, ha you can only clamp things on the inside of these jaws. There are no reversing jaws for this style of chuck. If we crank it open, let's see. I think this will hold something up to 30 or 40 millimeters, reasonably safe. Okay, this is about one, one of the teeth engaged in the spiral ring or spiral gear of the chuck. So that's the absolute maximum I personally would clamp in this chuck and not exceed a lot of force on it. Uh, that's about that's about 41 millimeters, but. Once, once the jaws are fully, fully inside the body of the chuck, about like this, or even a little bit more, then you can fully load the jaws and do not have to worry about breaking the teeth on the back side of the jaws. And that gives you about 24 millimeters of clamping diameter. Let's take this apart and take a look at the components and how well they were made. Looks like a regular six jaw chuck body, just with different jaws. And I think the backside will come off if I take out these, these three screws. This comes out like this. Does not look too terrible. These three set screws here hold the pinions in. Get those out too. Okay, I didn't show you the usual cleanup procedure, taking it all apart, throwing all the parts in the ultrasonic cleaner. It wasn't too dirty, just some dirty grease on the parts. 
Uh, did some deburring with file stones and some scotch bread to, to blend it all. The machining is about what you expect for a chuck in the 100, 200 buck range. It's okay. The fit between the, the spiral, spiral gear on this machine surface inside here, and the spigot that guides it in here is super close. And that's one of the most important things that because that gives you repeatability on your chuck. Everything else is not as important. And the fit of the jaw, jaws in the body, if you get the right ones together like this, it's also pretty, pretty decent. Doesn't weeble wobble around like crazy. Has a little bit of side plate, but it is what it is. It's not a thousand euro chuck. Definitely not. But for what I want to do with it, especially on the cutter grinder, it will be fine. The pinions, they are hardened. That's hardened. Um, they're pretty rough machined. Um, or should I say, the forging or uh, forming process on these. It's pretty rough, but the machining of the OD and the sky pin in front here is pretty nice. Same for the spiral gear. The machining is, is very nice. This one is actually machined completely. The gears are cut. You can see the machining marks in here. Uh, and heat treated. That's the, the black here. And then they machined the spiral and the ID for a precision fit. And these, the gear teeth are not cut. These are, it's some kind of a forming process. Let's get it back together. I think I have, I, I found one problem that I have to deal with. The jaws do not meet up at a very small diameter. I think the smallest diameter this chuck can hold right now is something like three or four millimeters and I would like it to go down to at least one millimeter. You see that they cannot go all the way to the center. And also this, this bevel grind here that gives clearance so they can move all the way up to each other is not the same on all of the jaws. So I'm going to fix that but for that I need the at least the spiral back in here and w at least one of the pinions to drive it. I like some molybdenum disulfide grease on, on slow moving heavy load applications like this. And as you can see this is really a tight fit down there. And this gives us the repeatability we want. Okay that's back together. Still moving. Let's get it all the way closed and look at the minimum diameter we can clamp right now. Uh, that's that's the minimum clamping diameter. That's about cannot hold a three millimeter pin, but can securely hold a four millimeter pin. But that's not exactly what I want. I'm going to grind the the side surfaces of these jaws down so they go more towards the center and allow me to clamp smaller diameters. I'm probably going to grind them to a real sharp knife edge and then hard bore them with the jaw chuck mounted on the lathe. I think I can hold this in a sixth jaw. So we're over at the surface grinder and I'm grinding these bevels down. In fact, I already did uh, all six of the jaws on both sides. I removed 0.6 millimeters of material already. Uh, I just need to clean up this one slightly, just remove the chatter marks from roughing it down with, with very heavy feet. Uh, and then I will show you the setup.
So. I have the jaws on the on one of these blocks. I made a pair of these years and years ago. It's basically a square block, ground all the way around, with a number of tapped holes, M6 in it, some through holes, and a, a fixed integral fence. And this allows me, in this case, to just butt the jaws up against this fence, clamp it with a toolmaker clamp, and grind this this bevel here on all jaws the same. For the second side, just flip it around, hold it with toolmaker clamp, grind, done. Uh, and this block is held in a toolmaker's wise at 31 degrees. I didn't want to go for 30 degrees because I figured that since the jaws have a little bit of play, I want them to be a little bit narrower so they don't bind up in any weird way. I recut the bevels and now they close way nicer and way smaller. This is a 2mm ejector pin and I can get good grip on it. I cannot grip a 1.5mm, but 2mm is already pretty darn good. Uh, not sure if I'm really going down to 2mm, uh, 1mm. Uh, for, but first, before I do anything else, I want to bore the jaws. And for that we need to preload the jaws. On a normal chuck, usually you can put something in the very back of the jaws, and bore the front of the jaws as, as much as, w as far back as possible and then just do a clearance cut in the area where you clamped your preload piece. It's not perfect because you load, when you hold a workpiece, you're loading the jaws differently. You're primarily loading them from the top. But with these tall jaws, I do not want to do that. Um, loading them in the back and boring here will would seriously bell mouth the jaws, so I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm doing the old pin trick. I'm going to drill six holes in the jaws, one in each, put a dowel pin in it, and then I'm going to, to clamp something like a, this bearing race here, this is the inner bearing race. Hold it with, with the pins on the OD and that will preload the jaws very realistic, like in a real application. Then I can use a, a carbide boring bar, a CBN boring bar to bore out the, uh, the ID of the jaws so all of them make contact with the part I'm holding. So I put the chuck here on the mill in the Ys and I aligned the jaws, two of the jaws, to be in line with the axes of the mill. Just by moving an indicator along one side and then jumping over to the other side and comparing them. So well within, well within one or two uh, hundredths of a millimeter. Now I need to center it up and I have a nice precision uh, bushing in here and I will use that. I will sweep that. Uh, yes, I'm sweeping a part that's held in the chuck that I want to bore later for precision. Uh, doesn't really matter that much because the mount I'm going to build for this chuck will be a set through or a just through. But thinking about it for more than a second, I will sweep the chuck body. For that I have to get the bushing out, get the jaws in a little bit more. Okay, that was actually pretty darn close between the chuck body and the, the clamped part. Uh, about 45 micron in X and Y it was on center. Let's reclamp something. Okay, uh, I'm going to use a 3 millimeter carbide drill to drill some holes into here. Could you imagine I do not have a 3 millimeter carbide drill in the house? I have a 2.5 here and I have 2.5 millimeter dowel pins here. So I'm going to use that. Uh, using the bolt hole circle function of the DRO, drilling the six holes. And we should be good to go.
There we go. Six holes in the... Um, judging by the chips, the jaws are definitely through hardened. Uh, make these nice, crispy, <laughs> easy breaking, short breaking chips. Definitely hard. Not, not like tool steel hard, like like lathe bit, but probably in the 40, 45 Rockwell C range. Let's see how 2.5 mm. Uh oh, oh. <laughs> And that's going to be a very tight fit. That, that's the problem with carbide drills if you want to lose a, a loose fit. Uh, well, you've got a problem there. Huh, okay. That's a mad tight fit for a 2.5 mm dial pin. Dial pins usually are a few microns oversize. Carbide drill drills nominal minus a few microns usually. So. This is going to be a press fit. Okay, get the sixth jaw here, held in the sixth jaw of my MCO. And I indicated the run out of the body using an indicator and the, the adjust, adjustment screws here on the chuck to get it run uh, well within 10 microns. Uh, could also be a little bit of out of roundness on the body of the chuck. I made sure it's rested all the way up against the face of the, the jaws, so we do not have any axial runout problems. And apart from that, and I pressed in six 2.5 millimeter pins. Didn't bother to bore them, the holes larger. I can pull them out with copper jaw advice when I'm done. And I'm holding, holding bearing race here on the pins so the jaws are nice and preloaded. I have to find a matching boring bar and bore, bore the jaws, as, as, as usual. You're looking at the at the chuck and the, the the bright line back here in focus. That's the surface we just bored. And if you look very carefully, I hope you can see it on camera. It starts smaller and goes bigger back here because the jaws bend out a little bit under load from preloading them with this ring here. And this should ensure that. Once we clamp apart, we should get reasonable contact over the whole length of the jaw. Uh, I did the boring with a super sharp aluminium uh, insert, DCMT insert for aluminium, uh, because that takes almost no cutting pressure. So I pulled the ring out of, of off the end of the chuck, off the pins and I clamped a, a ground bushing in here to check my runout and repeatability. I, I marked, you can see it at the edge of the frame here, I marked the pinion I used to clamp the ring for boring and that's what's going to be my start pinion. That's always the pinion I use for to clamp something precise because it will always load the spiral the same way as at the moment I bored the jaws. I will mark that with, with just an engraving on it. And as you can see, uh, this is not the diameter I bored it at. Um, when I bored it I had a, a slightly smaller diameter. So we are now at a different position at of the scrawl gear. That's also a source for error and repeat, a source for runout error. The, the scroll in here is not precise in any position, the same precision in any, any location it is. So over the, the span of, of over the clamping range of the chuck, it will change. But still, it's uh, pretty darn good without any modification. It's, this is, uh, oh, oh. 
Yeah, a little bit over 10 microns, maybe 15 microns. This is a 10 micron indicator. Uh, so that's already pretty darn good. And once I get the flange made for it with the adjust through feature, uh, it can be neglected anyway because I can dial the, the run out to zero at any given time I want. So let's get this out and clamp something smaller like a, a carbide shank, 10 millimeter diameter. Yeah, that's pretty darn good. That's also in the uh, 10 micron range maybe. Uh, this is a 2 millimeter carbide drill. Yeah, same here. About 10 microns. So that's pretty darn good for a for a jaw, for a for a scroll jaw chuck. Clamp the 10 millimeter drill bit and last test in the chuck. And this flute is the high point. Uh, it's pretty much zero. And when we go to the next flute, we have minus 30 microns. So we are 50 microns off center. Uh, that would that would be <laughs> uh, more than acceptable to be adjusted by by moving the chuck on the flange via the adjust through feature. But that's really already darn good. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, last thing I did, I pulled out the pins, chamfered the, <laughs> the holes, and I took it to the surface grinder and I just ground over the top of the jaw so they're all the same height. Of course, in a preloaded state. Um, so the main thing that I wanted to show you with this with this video was the boring of the jaws of a chuck. You can you can use this technique for any kind of chuck. It doesn't have to be an extended jaw uh, six jaw chuck for drill grinding. Uh, this works also with your regular three jaw, four jaw, six jaw, two and a half jaw. Doesn't matter. Uh, put the pins in and preload it at the area you're using the most, and that's the front of the jaws. Uh, Preloading in the back works sometimes, sometimes better, depending on the condition of the chuck. If it's a very, very tight chuck, a new, brand new four card chuck, for example, and you load it in the back and you bore the front of the jaws, not a problem. But uh, <laughs> on a slightly worn, even if it's a good industrial chuck, or on a Chinese chuck like this, uh, better preloaded where you, your load is going to come into the jaws. That's the front. Um, also, I wanted to show that a chuck can run through with... I, 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 I hear a lot blah 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 about that a chuck has not to run through because with proper... Um, with proper workflow, you do your workpiece in one setup and then part it off and you're done. That's that's nice in theory. If you never have turned a real part, that's okay. But if you work in a shop and you have to make real parts, you have to reclamp parts, change set, cha change setups, do a second op on the backside and stuff like that. Um, so in reality, you have to have a way to, to clamp a second side. And yes, you can, of course, use a, a four jaw independent and that's perfectly fine and absolutely a good way to clamp a wide range of, of parts with excellent runout. But on small parts, like like the stuff I do, 100, 150 millimeter in diameter with my larger six jaw chuck, uh, I, I don't use a, a four jaw independent. I don't even own one. I I use chucks that either run relatively true or have an adjust through feature like my sixth jaw. And I want to show that you can have perfect run out, or in this case, good run out without having to sacrifice some somebody at night or or summon a demon or something like that. It's just just good practice to to get a, a chuck well well running. So this will end up on the tool and cutter grinder or on the dividing head. I will make a, a flange that fits both machines. 
Uh, I have an idea for that. And it will also fit my MCO lathe, probably. So, thank you all for watching and see you next time.